Hi, my name is Emily Castillo. And I'm Jackie Morales. And today we're going to be talking about Charlie Parker and his impact on the nation. Charlie Parker was born on August 29, 1920 in Kansas City, Kansas. He began playing the saxophone at 13. He was the greatest jazz saxophone player, a composer, a band director, and a songwriter. Charlie Parker, along with Louis Armstrong and Ornette Coleman, were the three most revolutionary jazz musicians. He died on March 12, 1955 in New York at 34. Charlie was inspired by Lester Young and Buster Smith. He would play all the jazz standards with excellence, but he was quickly becoming bored with the predictable harmonies and chords. He wanted something new and challenging, so he began developing bebop. He began developing this music style in Harlem, New York with Dizzy Gillespie. The two of them experimented with chromatic harmonies, fast and difficult chord changes, and fast rhythms. Never been done before in the world of jazz. He eventually formed a band with Miles Davis on trumpet, Knox Roach on the drums, and of course Dizzy Gillespie, and ended up having a nightclub named after him called Birdland, based off of his nickname Yardbird, which became the most famous jazz club in the 50s, as well as many other successful ventures, and he became an amazing musician. Shortly after the original jazz had been created, the Civil Rights Movement began. It lasted from 1954 to 1968. The Civil Rights Movement was characterized by Black Americans' struggle to gain equal rights under the law and fight against discrimination. Jazz originated from the work songs of enslaved Black people, and during the Civil Rights Movement, jazz became a means to express Black voices in suffering, such as the song Strange Fruit, which came out in 1939, which was said to be the first protest song for the movement. Southern trees, they're strange. Fruit, blood on the leaves, and blood at the root. In these acts of protest through their music, record labels and television networks tried to silence their voices, but they persevered nonetheless and continued to create. Even today, black people are still facing racial discrimination across the nation. In 2020, we saw the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, fighting against police brutality and racially motivated violence. The American Jazz Museum talks a little bit about this. Jazz has always represented a balm, a guidepost, a marker for our troubling times. Out of the heritage of black creativity, but also in recognition that we deserve more. More justice, more peace, and more love. Hello again, it's uh, Jackie and I, and right now we're walking into the American Jazz Museum. While we are at the Jazz Museum, we figured that we might as well ask some of the employees there if they are musicians themselves, and we ended up finding somebody. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Gerald Dunn. I'm the uh, Director of Entertainment for the American Jazz Museum and I book all of the entertainment for the museum. Are you a musician here in Kansas City? I am a musician, I play the saxophone. What do you love most about jazz in Kansas City and 18th and Vine? I think the thing that I love the most about it is that the long uh, running legacy of jazz that exists here and that uh, so many jazz greats like Jay McShann, uh, you had mentioned Charlie Parker earlier, Charlie Parker, Count Basie, Jimmy Lunsford, Julia Lee, there's just so many, Ida McBeth, so many others uh, that uh, have been a part of this jazz legacy. And I just wanted to come to be a part of that. That's been my life now, playing music. Me, playing music has taken, taken me all over the world. While traveling, have you seen any influence that has spread in Kansas City that you've seen like across the nation or across, across the world? Yeah, I've, I've traveled with different bands and when uh, they've announced people and announced their names and where they're from mm -hmm. um, as soon as they would say and Gerald Dunn from Kansas City they're like ah, Kansas City Charlie <laughs> Parker <laughs> and uh, these are people that don't speak a lick of English you know and things like that and it just felt great you know, yeah. to know that people revered um, this place as like a jazz uh, center is there any like stylistic things that you've seen that have also carried over? Yeah, um, well, uh, as you may have seen inside the uh, museum, mm -hmm. jazz started in New Orleans, but we always like to say that it grew up into an adult here. <laughs> and so um, the swing beat 
um, that um, that um, was developed here in Kansas City actually started to influence all styles of music. Charlie Parker impacted the jazz community by simply being one of the greatest jazz improvisers of all time. His creation of bebop and his improvisations of jazz really influenced young, aspiring jazz musicians. He helped to create the new generation of jazz musicians and jazz that is developed today. While he may have inspired jazz, he also inspired many young African Americans. One African American in particular named James Baldwin was, was inspired by Charlie Parker's life, that he even wrote a book named Sonny's Blues. In this book, Charlie Parker happens to be the main character's idol. He did inspire many actions to be taken. As Charlie Parker was someone who really made the blues popular, he was also someone who knew how to express the African American struggles and life. His music carried the theme of African American culture struggles, and while his music expanded out, so did his message. Overall, Charlie Parker deserves to be in the Hall of Fame because he not only influenced jazz greats here in Kansas City, but he also had a huge impact in places like New York where his jazz club Yardbird is, in all different genres of music and in those he inspired through his new take on jazz. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching.